everyone. Um, I'm Julia Borston, and I'm so excited now to interview David Marcus, who runs messaging uh, at Facebook. And I think it's worth noting that I first met David when he ran a little company, which he had founded, called Zong, which I don't know if any of you remember, but this is about a decade ago. Yep. And then he, we met at F8, and you had this little payments company called Zong, which you then sold to PayPal. And then you were president of PayPal for a while before you were hired over by Facebook to run all their messaging products which is obviously a massive growing business. You have 1.3 billion users of Messenger now. That's right. Unless you want to update your numbers um, right now with us. Oh. Um, and it's great to have you here today because just yesterday Facebook re reported a pretty remarkable quarter, very strong growth on the top and bottom line. Not any details about how much revenue uh, Messenger is generating yet, much to my dismay. But a lot of talk about how Mark Zuckerberg wants to change Facebook to make it more about communication, less about content, less about fake news, and more about connecting people. So I'm curious, since Messenger is all about conversations, what his new vision for Facebook, or sort of refocusing of Facebook, mm -hmm. means for you and how you're trying to run the company. Well, it, it actually means a great deal. Uh, because passive consumption, you're actually not interacting with your friends, and when you want to have a meaningful social interaction with people that you want to have these interactions with, one of the best ways to do that is by communicating with them directly, and that means Messenger. So what you're going to see is actually us building more bridges from Facebook to Messenger, um, and also vice versa, to enable and facilitate more of these conversations. So. Concretely, for example, like if you're looking at a piece of content that has been posted by one of your friends, you can decide to comment or you can decide to start a thread with that friend and discuss that more privately or create a group and discuss that piece of content with a group of people that you select within an audience that's completely within your control. And more prompts to do that, whether you're in Facebook, will you see that on Instagram as well, sort mm -hmm. of really trying to integrate Messenger more into the way people are consuming content in their newsfeed? Well, there, there are just more social interactions that are happening right now on messaging than there is on you know, traditional uh, newsfeed products or even stories products. Um, and so as a result, it's a totally natural evolution for us to start um, just making those interactions uh, frictionless and uh, way easier to create in the first place. And how about how you're going to change Messenger? There's been a lot of talk about how Messenger's got too cluttered, you need to mm -hmm. streamline it. What is the problem with Messenger in terms of all of that, and how are you going to fix it? Well, I was the first one to say it, uh, and I agree. I think that you know, we did a lot of work to really differentiate between, like, you know, we all have a lot of options to message our friends, uh, and we really wanted to build capabilities that would stand us apart. And, uh, with some of them, we've had roaring successes. You know, video and real-time video is definitely something that uh, we've seen a lot of success with. We've doubled the volume of uh, video calls um, between people and group video calls, and we've added AR effects and all these things that people really have come to love. Uh, and then we've added a lot of things that individually work really well, but like if you put all of these things together in an app, it feels a little cluttered. So we're now investing and really simplifying and massively simplifying the interface and the overall experience. But as you added all these different features, did you see people using Messenger less? Was no. So, but you just noticed that people were complaining about it or? Yeah, and generally speaking, you know, I, I feel that it's really important to be proud of the products that you put in the hands of so many people. And you know, I felt that I wasn't as proud as I wanted to be about like, how our product looked and feel. Uh, felt and uh, and a lot of the people on the team felt the same way. So we, you know, just sat uh, in a, a room and decided it was time to change to, to clean it up. So through all this, of course, you're supposed to be generating revenue, and you have a n couple of different revenue models. But mm -hmm. it sounds like the most important is the click to message ads. Right. But my question is, if you're trying to really focus on communication and making sure you're connecting people, aren't those ads going to be clutter and distraction and sort of the equivalent of the viral videos in a news feed that Facebook has been trying to move away from. So a couple of distinctions. I mean, first, if you look at business content uh, or news content inside of a news feed, there's algorithmically ranked content, right? So in a news feed, you rank things. Um, in an inbox, you don't. It's a reverse chronological order of content, and that's the way communications work. So we're not going to rank content. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, number two is actually communicating 
also involves communicating with businesses. Like we love to communicate with people. Traditionally, right now, we don't really love to communicate with businesses because it kind of sucks. I mean, for 65% of the interactions between people and businesses, you still have to pick up the phone. And it's a really unpleasant experience that ranks pretty high up in the list of things you don't want to do any given day. Uh, and so solving that, because you know, if you move to messaging, you have a much better in interaction with businesses, is really important. Uh, and that's what we've done. We've opened up the platform about three years ago. We've created a vibrant ecosystem of developers that is now enabling brands to build compelling experiences that drive business objectives for them. Uh, and as a result, they want to create more of these bridges with their customers by buying ads that open threads with them. And it's completely within the control of people to open these threads or not open these threads. And what we've seen is it drives value. So we're going to continue investing in that. Drives value for the advertisers for based everyone. on the click through or I mean, it drives definitely value for advertisers because if you redirect someone from Facebook or from Instagram or even now from Messenger because we have ads inside of the inbox in Messenger, uh, if you direct people to opening a conversation inside of Messenger versus opening a web view, uh, in a lot of cases, you actually have a better outcome if you build the right experience inside of Messenger. When you're talking about the inbox, I can't help but think about my own Gmail inbox. Mm -hmm. And I use the Google, the inbox that is sort of the prioritization. You mm -hmm. have them do the different categories, and it's like the, the emails you actually care about, and then the social emails, and then the, and then the promotions. Right. It seems like people are moving more towards that model of deciding what they want to see and what they don't. How do you make sure that people don't just delete and look past those because they want to see the message from their mom? Yeah, what you're describing is my total nightmare. So I really like the last thing I want is like you know being the guy that actually recreated email inside of instant message on your mobile. Like that's the last thing I want, um, and I feel that like you know email is just failing right now to actually serve business communications because of exactly what you're describing. Uh, you have your promotional folder, and I do the same thing you do with select all and delete all the time. Um, and that's not what we want. And so the way we've built the system is that you cannot, as a business, open a thread with your customers unless your customers open a thread with you. So you, as a user, as a person, are in control of opening those conversations with businesses. You have controls at the top right of every thread with a business. You can stop it in one tap. Um, and we have strict controls for spam. I mean, right now, generally speaking, like people really don't get any spam from businesses inside of Messenger because we have really tight controls in place despite that we have despite the fact that we have an open platform with so many developers. So we're very thoughtful and paranoid about that, and we're going to make sure that what you described is not good, going to happen. A good thing to be paranoid about. So yeah. um, it, it's interesting because you're talking about having, you know, in, inserting ads in these places where people want to reach out to companies. Um, but with Facebook for so long, they talked about ad load, mm -hmm. how much more room there was to grow the ad load. And that was always something that investors really kept an eye on. How worried are you about sort of the ad load issue and how much your users are willing to take um, when they're sort of thinking of it as a communication platform? Well, I mean, you know, the signal is actually whether people start, you know, using the product mm -hmm. less. Um, and so far, what we've done is we've introduced ads in Messenger. We've rolled that out, and it's not rolled out to 100% yet. Uh, but so far, what we've seen is that actually, you know, people don't mind. Uh, and not only don't they mind, but if you actually have something that's valuable for them, in a non-intrusive way, because we've been, again, very thoughtful in the way we've done this. We're not going to shove an ad inside of your thread while you're chatting with someone. That would be like pretty bad. Um, and so we, we're doing it in a very non-interruptive way, in a very targeted way, and it's below the fold inside of your inbox. And you go there if you don't have any unread threads. And from an ad load's perspective, you think you have plenty of, of runway. I mean, we are starting from zero, so <laughs> you know, we just have to build the, uh, the supply there. Now, speaking of things that people want to do within Messenger, what about payments? How mm -hmm. important, I mean, you've been doing payments for a while. Obviously, payments are your background. You can use PayPal within Messenger. How important is this to the future of the service? Well, it's really important because when you want to pay someone, you always have a conversation about it, generally, or generally it's the other way around. When someone wants to get paid, they generally ask you. Um, and so uh, payments is really at home in a conversational environment. And so we have P2P payments uh, as a native flow in the US. Now recently, as of the end of the year in the UK and in France, we're going to continue adding more countries. 
Uh, and the experience is really frictionless because it's a debit card to debit card experience. So you just add your debit card and you can push and pull from your debit card, from your bank account to your bank account through your debit card. There's obviously a lot of competition in that space though mm -hmm. with Venmo and um, I've just personally seen the rise of Venmo um, in the way people are trying to exchange payments with me and, and sort of, mm -hmm. and, and PayPal, obviously people can use it separately. Payments are so huge on the Asian uh, chat platforms, mm -hmm. WeChat and Line. How are you going to really convert people, and not only just to, to do these digital payments, but to make sure they have to do it within Messenger rather than going off and Venmoing separately? Well, I think you know the, the advantage we have is that we have a lot of conversations happening uh, in Messenger every day, and the volume is you know staggering and increasing really quickly. Um, and we have another thing, which is M suggestions, that now over 100 million people use every month. And it uses AI to prompt you with the right thing when you want to do something that's relevant within the context of your conversation. Uh, so if you and I were in a conversation inside of Messenger and you were asking me to send you money for coffee or something, um, I would basically get an M prompt to actually do it and mm -hmm. it removes the friction completely and we've seen a lot of success with that. Can you give us any sense of how much growth you've seen in the payments business? Because obviously, I mean, you've had it here for a while, mm -hmm. but you're launching it internationally. How fast is this growing? How many people are actually, of your 1.3 billion users, how many of them are actually exchanging money on? So we don't have public figures of how many people are transacting. The US has been launched about two years ago, and so it's growing really nicely in an organic way. Uh, France and UK just launched in November, but it's not even, I think UK is now at 100% right now, but France not yet. Uh, so those two countries are still small, but the U.S. is a very healthy growth. So the obvious question when you're talking about payments is cryptocurrencies, because mm -hmm. you are also on the board of Coinbase. I mm -hmm. believe you were added in December to the right. board. And just a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was last week, Facebook announced it would no longer be accepting any ads for anything cryptocurrency related. So what does this mean for cryptocurrencies on Messenger? Look, first, Mark said it best, right? We want to protect the community, and that's like our job number one. Um, and all of the people, in, like the legitimate people in the crypto world, actually, you know, that I spoke to at least, thanked me for what we just did with that move, which kind of sounds counterintuitive. But the reality is the vast majority of these ads were scams. And we cannot let scams exist on our platform. And so we had to take a pretty decisive step to clean up. Uh, and once the industry self-regulates a lot better and you have... Uh, you know, better, more legitimate products that want to be advertised on the platform. When we get to that stage, we'll figure out a way to reintroduce these things. But right now, I think the whole industry was actually very worried about what was happening, uh, just because it would, as a whole, delegitimize like the whole industry. So down the line, how do you see cryptocurrencies being used on Messenger? Will you be able to pay for things using Bitcoin? What's the, what's the model? Well, I think it's premature right now. All of, whether it's Bitcoin or any of the altcoins right now, they don't have great currency properties. They're like they're great store value, digital gold. Ethereum serves all kinds of different purposes that are you know, changing the world right now. Uh, but um, you know, payments using crypto right now is just very expensive, it's super slow. Uh, so the various communities running the different uh, blockchains and the different assets need to fix all of these issues, and then when we get there someday, maybe we'll do something. But so, it. I mean, how far off do you think that is? Uh, it's actually, that's the advantage of a completely decentralized and distributed system is that I can really answer that I have no <laughs> idea. So why did you want to join the board of, of Coinbase? What do you hope to learn from that? Well, look, I mean, I've been fascinated by what's been happening in the crypto world since 2012. Um, and I think Coinbase has done, you know, by far, if you look at like the regulated companies uh, in the space, the, the best uh, in providing a service that enables people to, you know, access cryptocurrencies. Um, and I think that, you know, Brian Armstrong and the team there was very inspiring and uh, they thought I could add value and I kind of agreed. And so that's how it happened. And so are you concerned about the sort of popularization of, of these currencies? I mean, you know, the fact that there are all these ads mm -hmm. for them raises concerns. Do you think that's going to damage their long-term appeal? Well, I think, you know, in every early phase of technology breakthroughs, you always have all kinds of things that are happening that you don't see anymore 10 years in. Uh, it was true for the Internet in the very early days. Um, it was true for all kinds of different paid services, even on mobile, like, you know, premium 
uh, text messages, like there were all kinds of scams at first and then all of that got cleaned up. Uh, so I, th I just think that we're at the dial-up era of uh, blockchain and crypto. And so, you know, at this early stage, you'll have all kinds of bad things happening. Um, but, you know, I'm actually, in general, pretty surprised, you know, by the thoughtfulness and the self-regulation that's happening within the community. Of course, there are always rogue actors out there, but I think it's, you know, pretty remarkable. Are you an actually. owner yourself? Do you own some Bitcoin? I mean, not that much. Not that much. More or less than 50 Cent, who forgot that he owned like $8 million worth of Bitcoin. <laughs> no comment. Okay, so I have to ask you about Messenger Kids. I have kids myself, and I was kind of surprised when I saw that you were coming out with this new platform yeah. for kids age 6 to 12. And, and it's, it's, a, it's a big move, and it's a controversial one. And there have been a lot of um, letters that have come out, mm -hmm. you know, advocating for you to shut it down. It was, it was the organization for a... For a is campaign for commercial free childhood sent a letter to Mark Zuckerberg saying shut down this app it's bad for kids it's going to make them depressed it's going to make them unhappy it's not a good thing why did you decide to do this well so first our job is really to solve problems for people right and like I have an eight-year-old and we have a family group and up until this point she couldn't participate in the family group and she couldn't have a product that I felt confident she could use to communicate with us, with the rest of the family that's also abroad, um, and uh, with her friends. Um, and so this is a real solution to that problem because it offers the family total control over who she can talk to and what she does with the app. It's an app that's been very thoughtfully designed for kids that age. Um, and also I think that like, people are confused. I think that they uh, confuse social media and messaging. Social media is one thing. Um, and messaging is a completely different thing. I mean, communicating with your parents when your parent is traveling, communicating with your siblings, with your grandpa and your grandma when you know, they're not around. Um, I mean, to me, that's not like passive, negative time spent on your device. Um, and the alternative is actually very passive, you know, watching videos and doing all kinds of different things. And so I actually think that, you know, respectfully, I disagree with uh, all of the arguments that have been thrown out there. And I can see the, I can see the way my daughter uh, uses it on a daily basis now. Um, and I must say that it has enabled me to you know, be more in touch with her and she's been able to be in touch with all of the family. Facebook and Messenger clearly consulted with many different people when they were creating this mm -hmm. app. Um, but the backlash has been pretty, pretty widespread. Are you surprised by the backlash? Or do you think, yeah, are you surprised by the backlash? Well, look, I think, the problem is it's getting harder for uh, Facebook to do things um, just w with global enthusiasm. Like, you know, with, that's been received with global enthusiasm. Uh, and it's just the reality. And, you know, and it shouldn't be in the way of us doing what's right and building the right products for our constituents. I firmly believe that this is a good product and that it will find product market fit and that families will be better off because it exists. Um, and if parents disagree, then they don't have to give it to their kids and it's fine. How has the uh, adoption been so far? What kind of numbers have you seen? So what we've seen is actually for the families that have enabled the product, um, it, you know, they continue using it and continue using it on a daily basis. Um, and so um, that gives us hope that we've actually find, found product market fit at an early stage with this product. Do you see it as an alternative? I mean, obviously because of COPA, kids aren't supposed to be using mm -hmm. social media under the age of, I believe, 13. Do you see it as an alternative to kids sort of illegally using social media, you know, going on Snapchat when they're 10? Or, I mean, is that what it, it's really about? It's not social media. It, messaging, but <laughs> right. for instance, Snapchat uh -huh. is messaging, but mm -hmm. it's also social media, wouldn't you right. say? Yes, but so in the both. case, but in, in the case of Messenger, it's really not social media. It's just like you have, like so, like, and I also think that you have to use the product to really understand how it works. You have a predetermined set of people that are approved by your parents. So generally, your mom, your dad, maybe your grandparents, uh, and you have tiles that are big tiles that are those contacts, and you can video chat with them, uh, you can message them, uh, and that's it. And so, and if you want to add people, you can type the name of someone you want to add, and that goes into uh, the messenger account of the parents that then needs to approve uh, that other person. But that's right? still, I mean, the, the question is, sir, but if messenger is just communication and Snapchat is both communication and social media, yeah. 
do you see that as an alternative, your service as an alternative to kids using other tools illegally because they're not allowed to no, use their own? No, that's not the point at all. No, but, and I but, think, I mean, but, but, it, but back yeah. to Snapchat and yeah. your point, I think that Snapchat is more social media than Messenger uh, for all kinds of reasons and is definitely like mm -hmm. more than Messenger Kids because there's no such thing in Messenger Kids mm -hmm. because you have stories mm -hmm. and Snapchat and all kinds of different things that are more passive consumption and not communication. And in the case of Messenger Kids, it's only exclusively 100% communications. Okay. Um, but I do think there's a lot of concern that people are using all of these tools before they're 13. Well, then that's the role of the parents to yes. make that decision. Um, and so, we've given them the control to do and so. And you've given them the control. Um, one quick question on stories, because there was a comment, Mark Zuckerberg or someone made a comment in yesterday's call about how stories have become so popular as a way of communicating they're going to overtake posts in Facebook. How are you using that sort of the trends in communication to impact how you design Messenger? Well, so we started by having two separate products for mm -hmm. stories, uh, one uh, in Messenger, uh, and one in Facebook. Um, and the hope at that time was actually that, uh, or the instinct, which was wrong by the way, uh, was that people would use stories in a different way inside of a messaging mm -hmm. app, like kind of, hey, you know, who wants to grab a drink tonight? And then people would respond. And mm -hmm. like not doing that in a feed product would be, uh, would be I mean, the, the idea was that it would be different. Um, and actually what we found is that people, when they post two stories, they want the maximum possible reach. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've combined those two products and like since we've done that, like both are, are starting to do well. Um, and so you have stories inside of Messenger and on Facebook, you can post to your stories both on Messenger and on Facebook. It goes to both places in terms of consumption. Um, and when you share photos inside of a conversation thread inside of Messenger, you can post that photo to any of your mm -hmm. stories as well. So, but you're uh, seeing the same trend that they talked about yesterday. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and before we run out of time, I want to hear a little bit sort of a window into the future. Mm -hmm. There's been so much talk about AI on Messenger and these virtual assistants. And I know that so much more is done within the messaging apps in Asia. Take us beyond that. What is the real future of AI and Messenger? What's sort of your, your biggest dream of the kinds of things AI would be able to accomplish on the platform? Well, I think, you know, first we have M suggestions that it's at an early and basic stage, 100 million people use it every month, uh, but it's growing really quickly because we're building more and more intense. Like now, if you talk about music, you can send a full track uh, on Apple Music and Spotify, which have really great integrations inside of Messenger. You can uh, buy movie tickets, you can do all of these things, and it removes the friction for you to do these things. Um, so that's a baby step. Then the question is going to be, in the world of assistants, is it going to be one assistant ruling them all, uh, like you know, in science fiction movies? Uh, or is it going to be, much in, like in the world of apps, you're going to have one assistant that's going to be great at doing certain things. So you're going to have Alexa for certain tasks. Uh, you're going to have Google assistants for certain things. Uh, and then you have a myriad of other assistants that are going to be uh, helpful for more vertical things. And if you think about the assistance world in this way, then what's the role we can play? Uh, because we fundamentally connect people. Uh, and so how do we build something that's actually helping people do that and uh, do that with less friction? So, the, so where do you fit in the portfolio of assistance? I have Alexa to order my Amazon products and Google to send mm -hmm. my Gmails, but like where, so where does, where does Messenger fit in? Well, I mean, right now it's connecting people with all kinds of different mm -hmm. things that they can do, like superpowers that we have inside of Messenger. Uh, and then over time, we'll build more capabilities around you know, the direction that I described, but I can't or don't want to provide more <laughs> you details. You don't want to provide more point. details. But so I, I guess as a consumer, will mm -hmm. my experience on Messenger be dramatically different and dramatically better because of AI a year from now? How soon will we start to see big changes because of AI? I think give us two years. Okay, so two yeah. years from now, Messenger will be able to read my mind and, and book restaurant reservations or See, even that sounds that. scary right now. <laughs> like that that's not what it's going to but like it's going to it's going to be good. It's gonna be good. Yeah. Okay. Well then I think we should end it on that note. David Marcus, thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. Really appreciate it. Thank you.